back live again. Okay. Test one, two, three. I'm just going to pop out the chat here. Pop out the chat. Give people a little time to roll back in. Let's check it out. Hopefully the sound is okay now. Um, just in case we just end up loading this uh, beginning of the stream onto BitChute and YouTube, we probably will. Uh, we're doing a little comic book live stream and we had some sound technical difficulties. So we've already chatted up a little bit, the meet and greet on, um, on Twitch. But what we ended up doing was uh, restarting the stream just because we're having some sound issues. So hopefully sound has sorted itself out. Uh, we're just going to wait until people come back onto the stream. Uh, sound floating. Sound is floating. <laughs> sound is floating. Let's check it out. So sound is all wacko, eh? That is unfortunate. Still bad. Damn. Does it happen when he comes near the mic? No, it's still quiet. Must be the mic. I hope not. Oh, you know what, gang? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I had filters set up from before. I'm going to kill some filters. Uh, remove. Oops. This is me playing around with the previous uh, gain. Okay, how's that? Yeah, it's better now. It was just quiet. It's perfect now. It seems to be auto adjusting. It must be setting on the mic. So is this, uh, how's the sound right now, gang? Is it coming out okay? Yeah, it's better. There you, okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, Chicho, don't mess around with filters on, on sound. And if you do, delete them, right? I hope that's okay. Now it's pretty good. Okay, okay, sweet right this is what happens when i start trying to tweak a lot of things going on right now it sounds pretty good okay awesome i think it was quieter for a while and then yeah it's the one of the filters right now uh just in case you guys are into sound stuff i forget what i just took out i think i took out noise noise suppression but right now i got a gain uh plus gain of 10 on here and i'm running a uh, EQ standalone filter that I adjusted manually trying to um, get it sounding better uh, so I think this is sounding better than before I had to take out the noise suppression good job everyone we survived the sound crisis <laughs> the sound slightly distorted does sound slightly distorted don't be a tweaker Chicho I sorry I can't help it as soon as I figured out uh, or I, I was told or, you know, someone helped me find the tweaking aspect. I was like, oh, new options. Let's play around. So is the sound okay now? I could take out the EQ filter as well. Yeah, it does. Should we take out the EQ filter? I don't know about that. Should we do it? Should we leave it alone? Can you just revert to default? Um, I think so. The sound is still... Okay, I'm killing them. I'm killing them. Defaults. Okay, hold on. I'm going to kill this. Remove. And I'm taking out the gain as well. Uh, should we take out the gain? Let's not take out the gain. Because I think uh, I might need the gain in there. How is this sound? <laughs> The problem is when I hook up the, uh, I actually did some recordings and listened to them on the headphones and stuff like this, but that setup was different than this setup. So I got a feeling that if I'm gonna start tweaking it, I have to tweak it, distortion gone, I think. I have to tweak it for every setup. Lesson learned, lesson learned, better. The volume is now okay. Distortion was the latest issue. Now it seems good. Distortion is gonna, gone, I think. Try saying, Boops and beeps for sound testing. Boops and beeps, right? Keep the gain. Sound great now. 
you sound way better on speakers now okay sweet so we keep it this way yeah cool 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 thanks gang appreciate it yeah it's good okay awesome I need an upgrade to the system I've reached a level where I'm trying to squeeze what's it called um, blood out of stone or water out of stone right I've maxed out my stuff now I'm trying to squeeze as much as I can once I reach this level in general in my life what I've learned is need an upgrade to the system so I'll work on it okay I'll work on it gang the hills come alive with the sound of <laughs> jingle bells how are you doing so gang let's do the shoot and I'm gonna show you some of the stuff and I'll come back to the chat after we've done the shoot okay let me close this guy off and now comics and now comics stop messing around with the sound so let me turn these guys on okay let me turn this on turn this on and turn this on Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test. Cool. Okay. Scroll up to the last comment if you wouldn't mind. Scroll. Chicho, have you looked at, a, at equipment upgrades? Would be happy to donate some funds uh, for you. Oh, thanks, Nicholas. You know what? I, I looked a little bit, but... I haven't gone too hardcore into it. I have to talk to a couple of friends that are into, um, they know their sound stuff, and I need to uh, sort of uh, go on our Discord page and just tell people, I gotta, I wanna kick up my funds a little bit so I can contribute some as well. Like, I don't want, well, not that I don't want it to be great, get all the funds raised, but I do wanna, uh, be able to buy the stuff if not enough funds come in uh, so I want to reach to at least that level and then I can do the upgrade because I don't want to do an upgrade just get a new mic I I need a new I need a I need a serious system and I've needed that since the hard drive crashed right we're functioning on one main hard drive for editing now and that gets me a little antsy I need some backups usually so uh, thank you for the offer, Nicholas. Thank you for the offer. Um, I'll work on it. Okay. For now, take care of your lady. Engagement rings aren't cheap, brother. Okay. Uh, make sure uh, you're comfortable. Okay. I'll. We're still producing. We'll still. We're still creating. I'm still loving what I'm doing, um, and we'll we'll upgrade as soon as we can. Okay. Uh, thank you for the offer again okay uh, aside from that let's do a little clap let's click ourselves in okay test test cool well let me know better pay now and I will do bro just loves awesome thanks Nicholas very much appreciate it <clears throat> hi everyone this is chicho welcome to my channel and welcome to another comic book related video and just to let you know we're also live streaming this on twitch as well and uh, once i tell you what we're live streaming you have an appreciation for what's going on right now but basically uh the short version of it is uh someone that's been supporting uh, our work here that ended up buying some of the comic books that we had listed on eBay uh, ended up getting the comic books I packaged them up ended up getting the comic books and they mentioned that they were sending the comics to be great and I was really curious to see what the grades were that they were gonna come back as and the person that bought it uh, Mark thank you the person that bought it uh, mentioned that as soon as it came back they were gonna send one of the comics back to me as a gift okay and we're going to take a look at that i mentioned when the live stream started that i have my fingers crossed it came back as a grade we were that i graded it at uh 
on the eBay auction. Uh, either way, amazing. <laughs> Literally amazing, right? Um, no pun intended. Okay, so we're going to take a look at that. And what I'm going to do also is I'm going to show you a couple of comic books that I bought in the last couple of months. Okay, as you know, I'm sort of flying on low budget. So I've been sort of scavenging, right? There's auctions coming up for uh, local sellers. So I've been trying to bid on stuff and whatnot. I've lost out most of almost all of the bids that I put in, but I was able to get my hands on a couple of fantastic buys and very happy. Actually, more than a couple. The other ones sort of were things that I wanted. They were really uh, on the low end. They were uh, on the cheap, cheap, and they're just filling in collections that I'm very happy to have. And at some point, I'll show them to you. But I thought uh, I would show you these ones, which were leaps and bounds, way more expensive than any of the other uh, penny comics that we ended up buying, right? But I'm going to show you these other two, uh, two as well. Very happy to have these in my collection. Okay, one of them is CGC, so we've added a, another CGC. Uh, a comic to our comic book collection as well as the gift that has found this way to us and there is three books that I want to review for you okay and I thought we start off with the reviews because um, well two of these books actually all three of these books you would have uh, heard me talk about but one of them I mentioned that I was going to read basically I grabbed it, I bought it pre, I think it was during the spring it came out, spring of uh, uh, this year, right? And I mentioned that I was going to have a read through it during the summer and I did end up having a read through it, okay? So let's do the reviews first and then we're going to look at the comic book hauls, okay? The first comic book, right, is the one that I ended up getting in the spring and, I, and I've shown this to you guys and I showed it uh, a couple of times during the live streams. And this book is Monk by Yusef Dakudi. Okay, this book right here. Now, I don't, you know, I'd never heard of Yusef Dakudi, right? I tried looking him up and I did look him up and it looks like he's done a fair bit of work. I believe he's releasing the books in French. I'm not 100% sure on this, right? I didn't dig too deep into who the creator of this book is. Know this name. I've, I'm going to keep my eyes out for this, this person as well from now on for anything that they're putting out, right? But the reason I bought this book was because of Monk, Thelonious Monk. And I've mentioned Thelonious Monk before, right? And as soon as I saw this, uh, advertising previews because I look at the catalog that comes you know I get uh, the previews catalog every month when it comes to the comic book uh, store he, he basically supplies free previews to anyone that has a subscription box at his comic book store so I get that every month and I flip through it and at the beginning of this year I believe 2019 I saw this solicited and I ordered it through the comic book store and it arrived in spring right now this book hands down is brilliant really let me show you some of the artwork right and the reason that i picked up this book is because of thanolius this is the way you pronounce his name or spell his name t-h-e-l-o-n-i-o-u-s thanolius hopefully that'll focus Thelonious Monk, okay. He was a jazz pianist composer uh, from the 19, I shouldn't know because I read this, but the dates, uh, you know, escaped me. But from the 1950s, 60s, and I forget when he passed away, right? I believe it was uh, last decade or so, maybe 90s or 2000s. Like, again, I should know because I read this, but I finished this a few months ago. Okay, and if you want to read an amazing biography on an amazing musician considered to be one of the greatest musicians ever, really, in some of people's top five greatest American musicians ever, top 10 greatest musicians ever, greatest composers ever, just an artist, really, uh, this is it. You need to read this, okay? Now, for me, 
I had heard of Monk through a documentary that Dave Chappelle put out called Block Party, right? And Block Party was a sort of documentary Chappelle put out where he invited a whole bunch of musicians to come and um, basically have a block party, right? He sent out some invitations and stuff and brought in Jill Scott and Dead Prez and uh, Kanye West and um, um, uh, man, I forget the names, right? I for, um the person that we cut the uh, Yusef, uh, he changed his name basically. The, they put the black on both sides. Uh, Talib Kowal and uh, Mostaf, right? They were also playing, and there was uh, there was a few other people playing, right? And I knew some of them, and some of those people I sampled their music after watching that documentary. Okay. Now, during the documentary, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend watching it, right? It's called Dave Chappelle's Block Party. Now, during the documentary, Dave Chappelle mentions Thanonius Monk. It's just a, really, it's like a 30-second little, or even a 15-second little uh, rant that Chappelle does regarding Monk. And I, when I watched that documentary, that sort of stuck with me. And I checked into Monk back then, but because I was sampling some of the other music, um, that other musicians that were playing during the block party, I really didn't get a chance to go off on Monk, right? When I ordered this, when the book arrived, right, in spring of this year, what I ended up doing was I already had Miles Davis on my MP3 player, right? So I started listening to a lot of Miles Davis. I started listening, uh, sort of looping that with uh, Scars on Broadway, the person that came out from System of Down, right? So I was listening to Miles Davis and Scars on Broadway, right? As soon as this book arrived, thanks to recommendations from people on Twitch, that know their music they recommended i had listened to john coltrane as well so i downloaded a few or sorry i sampled a few albums from john coltrane right so i started looping miles davis and i started looping uh john coltrane right in preparation to listening to thanolius monk and what i ended up doing i sampled some of the albums from monk let me give you the list of the albums that I listened to, right? Uh, Genius of Modern Jazz, Volume 1 and Number 2, okay? Live at Five Spot, Mysteri Mysterioso, okay? Monk's Music, Plays Duke Ellington, Straight No Chaser, Columbia Collection, Complete Prestige Recording, and Underground, okay? Those are the albums of Monk that I ended up looping. So basically the way I pre prepped myself, really, and you have to pre prep yourself for this, okay? The way I prepped myself, I looped Miles Davis, Scars on Broadway together, and then I kicked into John Coltrane, looping about five of his albums, right? A few times. And then I listened to these albums from Monk, okay? Once I had gone through one iteration of this, because I needed to, have an appreciation for what Mon Monk's music was about, right? Just, uh, just a 15-second little rant that Chappelle had of Thelonious Monk. It was praise, <laughs> like leaps and bounds beyond one-hour speeches of people praising other musicians, right? It was, it was amazing. It really stuck with me, right? So I, I knew it was going to be magnificent. So I looped these albums once, or listened to them once. Once I had gone through one iteration, I started reading this and I listened to the albums multiple times, right? I'm not sure how long it took me to read this. Uh, I savored it. There's times where I would just read a few pages, right? Really, just read a few pages and then I would listen to the music, right? And this is basically a biography there are other musicians that have appearances in this book, right? Some of the stuff, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, right? They talk a little bit about it. There's a little bit of 
New York history with Rothschilds being in here. That's how it started, which blew me away, right? And this book is created in a way that reflects Monk's music. Like, I can't explain it beyond that because, well, let me try, right? This thing is sort of goes into sort of a dreaming to a certain degree. And that's what I found myself happening or what was happening to me when I was listening to Monk's music. Because when I was listening to Monk's music, some of the stuff is offbeat. Some of the stuff is very mellow. Some of the stuff just goes chaotic. So basically, I would go for two hour walks and listen to the music. I was traveling somewhere for, you know, an hour trip or hour and a half trip. I was listening to the music. And what I found myself feeling, experiencing was basically the same type of experience you would have if you were in a room with a lot of people where all of a sudden the conversation picks up and the volume in the in the room becomes grows and grows and sometimes it just becomes overwhelming and then boom, just dies down and there's whispers in the room and quiet where you can just sort of meditate and lose yourself in your own thoughts and then slowly the music picks up again and all of a sudden you find yourself sort of carried away in some kind of experience or conversation where it's picking up and it's lots of excitement and then all of a sudden boom right that's the feel of monk's music to me okay and that was exactly the feel i got from this book i know i'm giving it like i'm really i'm losing uh some of my words right because l l reading this and looping monk for i don't know it took me a couple of weeks right to i took a little break in the middle and i looped monk a few more times these albums and then i went back to this again right because i really didn't want it to end and it was finding that i was reading parts of this and then i would have to go back and listen to the albums again and trying to catch some of the description some of the some of the feel of what the music represents interpretation really of monks music represents and then trying to listen to it hear it on the albums right and i would you know there's they drop a few names of albums and songs in this right so i would go back to my playlist to make sure you know i had the music that I was, you know, that was being mentioned here in the albums that I was looping. And some of them I did, some of them I didn't, right? Because a monk has, his, his library is enormous. I don't know who's, who's as larger, Nino Simone's or monks. Um, my guess is Nino Simone produced 38, I believe 38 uh, unique uh, standalone albums. And there's a whole bunch of compilations of the best of and whatnot i haven't looked into how many albums monk released his disc discography but what i had what 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 i've been looping what i mentioned the albums that i listed that's just a fraction of how much work he's produced right and a lot of those well not a lot of it but a fair bit of the classic stuff that they're supposed to be they're considered to be classic are mentioned in this graphic novel highly recommend it really i could sit here for an hour talking about this flipping through this but i don't want to give too much spoilers if i've given uh too much already hopefully i haven't okay highly recommend reading this if you like amazing biographies comic book graphic novel biographies and if you like if you're a music aficionado if you want to listen to someone which is unique 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 it will blow you away if for sure read the graphic novel at the same time because you'll have an appreciation for what's going on with the music right because at first first few loops that i did i really didn't appreciate what was happening until i hit certain parts of the graphic novel that was talking about 
some of the tracks that I was listening to. And then I would go back and listen to those albums. I would go, oh my God, that is brilliant. That is amazing, right? And then you can sort of try to focus in on the piano because Monk was the pianist in all of these, I believe, right? You can listen to the piano and try to catch the notes that Monk is playing, right? And then no matter how hard you try, you find yourself sort of lost in the music and the piano drifts away from you and the other instruments kick up and then once the the sound right the rhythm hits a certain place where i haven't figured it out yet but it's most likely when monk is sort of slowly coming back into the conversation of the music you see it pick up again and go oh wow 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 wow, wow, wow. boom drop right absolutely brilliant highly recommend it highly recommend it okay the next graphic novel the next graphic novel is volume number four of monstrous okay now i've been collecting i'm buying the singles of this and i bought i hopped on this from the get-go when the number one came out like in 2016 i believe right this thing is brilliant highly recommend it if you like epic tales and the artwork is very unique right and this is created by marjorie lu and uh, sanata Taka takita okay the names are up here monstrous so this is volume number four don't pick up don't start reading this from volume number four that's like jumping in to lord of rings in book number two you can't do it you need book number one you have to go through that right this is on the same level it is absolutely an epic piece and in this volume i'm going to give a little spoiler here in this volume all of a sudden we see the players that are about to embark on the journey just like many great uh, fantasy science fiction tales uh in literature where there's character build up uh, incredible for issue after issue and then all of a sudden you find yourself you know sometimes lost in the story but once you move on a few pages or a couple of issues down you realize what was happening in previous issues right absolutely brilliant if you want an epic read uh, one of the greatest comic books uh, comic book stories that have been told uh, at least in the next last couple of decades right fantastic read highly recommended highly recommended okay great read the third review sorry about the quick review on these ones because I don't want to give away any spoilers for monstrous right I really don't uh, because it's it's very important if you like science fiction and fantasy to have a read through that okay here's another book that i picked up uh, and i picked up this uh the first issue of this when it uh, first came out and this is uh, black hammer now this thing just came out uh, last week or the week before so week before right and it's a one dollar special reprint of jeff lemire okay let me show this to you jeff lemire and dean ornstone stone okay jeff lemire and dean are all <laughs> ormstone are the creators of this book right this universe really black hammer and black hammer just had a recent crossover with justice league from dc comics so it's pretty much established that Black Hammer, this universe is going to be around for a very long time to come. And what's happened is uh, Jeff Lemire and Dean have formed a production company. And there, I believe there is movies and TV series about to be produced based on this universe, right? So if you want to delve into this universe, go to your comic shop the odds are they will have copies of this i grabbed a handful of copies of this right because it's three comic books in one reprinting 
three number one issues of different stories from the same universe, right? The first one is the first Black Hammer issue that came out. Now I picked up the first uh, this this issue, and I picked up. I think it was at least I got both of these co covers. Like this one was one of the covers uh, for issue number one, and this one was the another cover. I believe there's a third cover. I picked up the first few issues of Black Hammer, and I had a read through. A black hammer when it first came out it, it is absolutely brilliant fantastic storytelling and uh, if you watched some of the other comic book uh, videos that we put out uh, we've talked about Jeff Lemire Jeff Lemire's work uh, specifically related to Valiant Comics he's told some classic epic stories for Valiant Comics and he's put out a lot of independent works as well right this one uh, I just did a little research on them. He considers this to be one of the most uh, important things that he's released, right? He said this is this is dear to his heart. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of depth to this series, Black Hammer, and what this thing is is the first issue of Black Hammer that came out, okay? And then he put out another story arc related to uh, what's it called Sherlock Frankenstein right and this was cover number one of the covers for right here and this is a cover by uh, Mike uh, uh, Mignola the person who does uh, hell um, the names <laughs> right uh, what you would call it uh, Hellboy right and he did the cover for this one and this story was pretty good as well it wasn't bad okay the art style was a little different or it could have been the same it is just, you know what i didn't really look into who did the artwork for this uh, yeah i'm not sure how who did the artwork for this it felt a little different the inking might have been different so the second story is not bad it's related to the original Black Hammer story. And the original Black Hammer story, I forget how many issues it ran for. Okay, I believe it was a maxi series. And then the Sherlock Frankenstein was a mini series, I believe. And then there's another number one that came out, and he called it uh, what was this one called? It was called da, 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 the Quantum Age. Okay, and this is the cover of the first. Uh, cover a i believe and this was cover b okay i didn't pick up this one i picked up sherlock uh, the first issue of the sherlock uh, frankenstein one uh, but i didn't continue buying any of the other ones because i didn't read it and i didn't pick up this one but this one wasn't bad either but the cream de la creme for this is black hammer in my opinion pick this up it should still be available in your comic book store go to your comic book store there should be plenty of these around okay get them to order this for one dollar you get three comic books and the first appearance of the characters in this universe jeff lemire's story uh it's a great introduction and this is the back cover for it all right great introduction uh to this universe and from what i understand tv series and possibly movie in the works for this okay that's the comic book reviews I wanted to do. I went off on Monk uh, a little bit, uh, hardcore, because really, I'm still looping Thanolius Monk. I'm still looping the music. So uh, it's uh, when I want to sort of drift away and just lose myself and my own thoughts and experience something magnificent, right? I'm listening to Thanolius Monk. And I'm not, I mean, I'm going to be looping these albums. How many albums? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten albums. I'm going to be looping these ten albums for a while before I load on anymore, right? Because I only have a little four gig MP3 player. So I have a few masters on that thing and I cycle through things. Okay. Now, aside from the comic book reviews, let me show you. Uh, comic book hauls and the little gift that we ended up getting okay here's one book that i bought and i didn't have this and it's a golden age comic book and it's three dimension adventures of superman in 3d okay 
awesome and this you know they released this thing in 1953 it came with 3d glasses and if you open this up it's got the 3d here let me crack this open so you see it it's graded at uh two right uh so it's graded at good so it's low end right so two out of ten basically uh, but i ended up getting at an amazing price ended up picking it up for let me put the tape here and then i'm picking it up picking it up for 1950 canadian which is basically 15 dollars, 1450 us which is a fantastic price fantastic price so you can see it's you know it's worn it's still attached like the cover is attached and this is what it looks like take a look i don't actually know who the artist for this is uh, da, 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 uh does it even say who the artist for this is i try to find it uh, initially just quickly but uh the man who stole the sun superman take a look at this awesome so the whole comic is like this uh, i haven't put on uh 3d glasses try to track one down to see what it looks like in 3d I've actually had other 3D comics as well. I got one, I got the, I believe there's only one EC comic book from 1952 that they released in 3D. And I ended up getting that at a, as a steal as well a while ago. And uh, this was a great price. Okay. The EC comic one, I think we got for less than $10, maybe, maybe for $12 or something. So that was a great buy. And I'm glad to have that in my collection as well. But this one, fantastic golden age 3d superman comic right when i picked it up the comic shop owner was like damn you got that at a great price great price very happy with it right <laughs> who doesn't love a 3d superman comic right what was the price on this when it came out 25 cents in 1953 right that's seriously on the expensive side from that period right. let me show you this i tried to get my hands on this and i can't believe i got it for this price right um, again the comic shop owner was uh damn you got that at a great price it's a cgc graded let me take it out of the plastic right cgc graded comic from 1952 and it's crime detective comic volume three number three right serious reflection here right you can see the camera in the thing what i'm looking at right and it's a female smoking a cigarette this is so like and it's a brand new case that's why it's shining so much he mentioned that this was a brand new case so here let me show it to you like this right fantastic fantastic maybe this is less reflection right beautiful artwork the crime comics from that period have some of the most amazing artwork and uh, there's bill uh ely art in this it's the last story i looked this up it's the last story right and um the reason that this is graded at two i believe is because the spine uh, the cover was detached and i didn't know this but it looks like when the cover is detached it automatically drops down to a two if someone um you know if that's false if i'm under false or i understood it incorrectly please let me know but as far as display wise goes this thing looks beautiful right there's no extra no notes on it here but it only mentions here at the bottom of the cgc thing that the cover is detached so I'm assuming if the cover is detached, it automatically kicks it down to a two. I'll have to look this up. Okay. I'm not 100% sure how their grading works. I just grade things according to what I think they are. Right. And personally, just because the cover was detached, I wouldn't grade a comic book as a two. Not if the cover is this intact. Right. Oh, yeah. How much did I get this for? Check this out. <laughs> I ended up getting this for $26 Canadian, which is basically $20 US, right? That's less than what it costs to send this comic to be graded, right? When I picked it up, 
the the guy said he was expecting to get a lot more from this and i think what happened was some of the other books that he had went for insane amounts so people were tapped out uh they couldn't afford to bid on some of the other books so luckily chicho ended up getting uh this guy for twenty dollars basically the third one right now this book is the book that was with me a few months ago it's a book that one of the people on twitch uh popped in and you know we're talking about comic books and stuff like this and they knew i'm not showing you the front of it just because the names and the addresses and stuff are on there right so we're gonna crack this open and this thing is basically a comic book that i put up part of a collection and it's uh if you're following the other videos you would have seen it being loaded on we graded it and put it on to ebay it's amazing spider-man 361 right and i put this up with the rest of the amazing spider-man the appearance of appearances of uh, the first appearances of cletus the cameo appearances of carnage and cletus and the first two full appearances of carnage and this is the most expensive one it's uh first full appearance of carnage was amazing spider-man 3 uh 361 and this thing um mark is the person that ended up buying it uh, thank you mark i mentioned during the last stream that appreciate it very much right and i he mentioned that he was going to send it back to me I was like no man you can't do that it was because this was you know more expensive than i believe most of the other ones put together right so it was the it was a cream right so what he ended up doing was when he got the books he sent this into cgc got it graded and then sent it back up to me as a gift right so huge huge and if you know uh, the history of amazing spider-man this is a very very important book right very important book and what i ended up grading this as was 9.4 right near mint <laughs> seriously i'm like nervous on this i think that's why i've been sort of uh forgetting names and sort of losing my train of thought because this thing's been sitting on my couch for the last day for us to set up the live stream for me to crack this open right so it's packaged like <laughs> lots of bubbles and wrapping and stuff so let's put this out look at this oh my god serious bubbles look at this awesome <laughs> so we gotta crack this open hold on let me put this guy here now look at this here crazy let's see what this is and i don't have this graded for sure i don't have this graded right. i only have I think with this one we have a total of i don't know probably 10 or 12 cgc graded books or something let's check it out and this thing when i graded it um i mentioned that on the spine on the lower staple i should dangerous lower staple was uh, a little bit of crease on the lower staple so i'm not my estimate of this thing would be 9.4 because the rest of the book was absolutely beautiful right and that was sort of a stress mark or whatever it is on the staple so i'm not sure how much that kicks down the grade but let's see what cgc considers that to be No, what is it? I don't know yet. Oh my god, no way. Awesome. <laughs> By the way, Mark is watching on the live stream, right? Wow, cool. 
So I guess we're lowballing it on the eBay auctions, right? This sucker came back as 9.6. That is sweet. Crazy, crazy. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Fantastic. And this thing, by the way, this thing had, because of the printing, right the way they print comic books in the bottom of it there's a the cut things that they do with marvel marvel had a lot of these because this stuff was sort of on newsprint when they did the cut for the comic books there's usually a couple of slits not usually but a lot of the comic books have a couple of slits at the bottom where the cutting happens so they look like holes and they are holes but that doesn't knock it down in the grading so i knew about that so i didn't knock off anything on it i just assumed just because of the <laughs> spine thing on here i was a 9.4 but it came back as a 9.6 oh crazy crazy dude awesome awesome so some of the things we must have graded at 9.6 9 9.6 they would have come back as 9.8 and kick it up kick it up right <laughs> so people that bought did the buys on the ebay the auctions I'm glad they're they're getting great comics. We have one person uh, commenting, laughing at how low I was grading some of the comics. <laughs> right? He was very happy. The person buying. There's a few people that have been buying the comics. They've been very happy with the comics, right? So first full appearance of Carnage, nine point six slabbed, and th so this thing basically, uh, Mark ended up buying for. Um, it was hundred. 167.50 Canadian, which came out to, you know, that comes out to 120, uh, $126 US or so, right? So $126 US, right? Uh, I don't know how much it costs to send it in for grading. I, I know it costs from Canada, it costs too much. <laughs> like it costs like 40 bucks or something or more, right? So 40 bucks Canadian, so it would be 30 bucks US, right? So this thing total cost not including shipping that mark sent thank mark seriously dude pff, thank you for the love man thank you for the love right uh, i'm just doing a price thing just because we're doing a lot of price things on comic books right so include the shipping and all this jazz so 130 another 30 160 170 let's say 180 let's say right 9.6 cgc for 361 i think it's selling for 200 plus right so with all this shipping sending in yourself to be graded doing a hail mary buy on ebay you find the right buyer you get great deals right fantastic and if the right if, if the seller is super lucky has amazing people that are sending them amazing love they get a great and send them back to them awesome this is great what else did they say here uh, amazing spider-man 361 marvel comics uh january february march april 1992 492 david uh, michelini story mark Bl um, bagley and randy emberlin cover and art first full appearance of carnage cletus cassidy fantastic look at this thing awesome, awesome. I, this thing's making me crazy happy like really just because it's this you know what it is too i i've never sent a book in to be graded right the feeling i'm getting right now this was in my hands right i looked at it we flipped it just to make sure right we graded it we sold it right went to the united states mark kind enough send it in to be graded comes back comes back here right this is a book that was in my collection that went on a serious trek and found its way back fantastic wow 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 super super cool super cool this thing just became one of my favorite comics in my collection really like cherish right cherish 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 very cool very cool. mark thank you brother thank you 
awesome. It was about time we did more comic book videos. We're gonna do more. Okay. We're gonna get into readings. We're gonna start doing a little bit more comic book hauls. Um, the odds are I probably won't do any more. We might do more videos where I load comic books on eBay. We'll see how it goes. I'm way behind. I've made some promises to people to load stuff uh, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm way behind. I'm going to try to get some done this week. Uh, but slowly, we're going to start rolling back into comic book mode. Mathematics mode will always be there. Okay. Uh, Julian Assange will be there. But comic books, you're going to slowly start seeing more presence uh more videos being put out uh we took long enough break from comic books we've got to do some readings uh we're going to talk about some history and uh and whatever else comic book involves which is many 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 amazing things gang okay aside from that thank you for being here thank you for, for watching pick up monk read it pick up monstrous read it pick up black hammer read it and enjoy your comics bye for now <laughs> crazy mark what the hell dude you just sent me a 9.6 amazing spider-man 361 what what dude okay let me go back to the chat man let me go back to the chat let me go. I'm so glad it came back as a nine point six. I was, I knew it was high grade, but then it's been sitting on the couch for like all day yesterday. I'm like, I'm all nervous now. I'm all, I'm all just like opening up a test, getting a mark from a test or something in school. Let me detangle myself, gang. I'm so glad it came back as a nine point six. I was so nervous, brother. So nervous. Cool. Okay, let me detangle this. Let me detangle this. <laughs> crazy. Crazy, crazy. Oh, I gotta move that. Okay, hold on. Okay, gang, I'm not gonna uh, put the mic on mute. Uh, just in case we lose the sound again or it messes up. I don't think it will, but just in case. I'm going to be very gentle moving it. So hopefully it's not going to be, I'm not going to bang it up. Okay. Hopefully I won't bang it up. Let me close this guy too. Let me move these guys. <laughs> Crazy. I got to read the chat. I got to read the chat. Okay. Hold on. Let me do a switch. Oh, I taped this down. Okay. Hold on. Lots of love, lots of love, Mark. Thank you. Hey, Chicho, how's it going? Luca, baby, doing good. <laughs> that smiley face, laugh out all. I'm glad you like it, man. Oh, dude, like it. Dude, sh the love is insane, man. It's not, I, I love it, but it's more than just the comic, right? It's, it's, it's the love. It's, yeah. You know what it is. You know what it is. You all know what it is, right? Dude, fantastic. Thank you very much, man. Honored, honored, really. <laughs> Chicho's main reading was the first bit I came across when I discovered. Oh, is it work? Awesome. What? What? That's why. And, um, I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know if this is. I don't think this is the one we read. I think the one before this that we sold on eBay was the one we read because I think I graded that one as a nine point two, right? <laughs> I got into comic books thanks to your vid. Ah, oh, nice, nice, Luca. Nice, Luca. Cool. Let me catch up to some of the chat. I, I gotta. Oh wow, there's a lot of chat going on, eh? Hey, Chicho. Crap, cyanide, how are you doing? Good evening, folks. 
since this is vaguely related to comic books have you switched uh watch the man i did watch the mandorian i've watched the first two episodes uh europeans don't have disney yet uh the pirate bay is international <laughs> vpn is your friend i like the mandorian it still has the disney feel to it right like i, I do have criticism of it right sort of critique of it personally uh like it, i'll give you one spoiler when the guy no i won't give you any spoilers you know there's there's a disney feel to it right is it watchable for someone who's not that familiar with the star wars lore yeah they do have easter eggs in there uh but it's basically as someone um i was following someone that has was following comic books and they mentioned basically the mandorian is lone wolf and cub the equivalent on of lone wolf and cub uh from the manga right and it has that feel to it right absolutely i'm very well versed in star wars and mandorian lore myself but honestly yes it's uh had friends who never watched any of the movies watch it and they love it yeah get ready for a couple of needing five different paid subscribers to get decent s streaming content i'm going back to torrenting <laughs> no, i don't think i ever left <laughs> i'm at three right now netflix disney plus and crunchy roll don't need anything else it is getting a bit crowded with those streaming services that's for sure yeah the streaming wars right nbc making another one soon hello brain fog how are you doing love the jazz love the miles love the coltrane so i got to check my dude nikki check out culture i uh, check out monk check out monk check out monk listen to it buy this graphic novel read it loop it it'll bro blow you away there are bob ross stickers <laughs> yeah there are i've seen them a few times that's a global emote you can do it too nice uh click on the happy face scroll down cool story bob oh what the, is that pixel bob kill it before it lays <laughs> evil on toes how are you doing good to see you do you stream da, da, da. black hammer i'll add it to list yeah evil on toes read black hammer the first series that came out i read the first two i fortunately i didn't continue reading i was reading other things but it's on my must to read list how old is that again Bla um black hammer uh, 2016 i believe dante if that's the one you were talking about four by four grid game hey hey join the conversation i thought mark you the man haven't seen she's she's showed this happy also all true how are you doing seriously this thing man really wow 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 yeah man this stream was worth it 100 percent for that unboxing reaction alone nice the love reaction love the that's awesome nice okay okay i'm gonna catch up with the stuff in the bottom how do you feel about the new generation experiencing comic book characters through movies i'm 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 okay with it what i hope happens is the ones that really love it they go to the source material you need to go to the source material um and i think that's what's going to happen because people are going to fall in love with these movies and at some point the movie the tv shows they're going to die down and the quality might drop or whatnot but if you fall in love with the character you'll appreciate what that character is capable of right like if you lead, read some of the golden age superhero comic books they're not very good right? the stories are very a lot of them the stories are very juvenile very childish very cliche they're they're not like ec comics the horror stories or the more adult oriented stories however the characters were brilliant so what the characters do in regards to comic books they they feed your imagination so once you read about carnage right you don't necessarily have to just let yourself your your imagination just stay within the bounds of what's written in the comics you can start thinking about what could that character be capable of right on a more intense level and that's what we're seeing happen with dc comics when they're releasing black label 
right? They're creating more adult, more heavy oriented comic books with the same characters. Marvel did it with the Max series. The Max stuff was some of the best stuff that Marvel has put out, especially Punisher one, right? So what's i hope anyway it's a lot of people that are watching a lot of these tv shows and movies and stuff like this they start going back to the source material and start reading some of these things right amazing 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 is pirate Bay still around nicholas yes and i can't believe well i can believe it because the tech community if they really want to keep something up they can do it right and uh, a lot of things that you cannot even find on YouTube, meaning information, um, you can't find it on Google, you can't find it anywhere, you can find it on the Pirate Bay. Uh, that's my take, right? First time here, dig your channel. Awesome, Brain Fog. I'm glad you like. There are proxies. There are proxies, yeah. Like Mini Nova, the first time I loaded my videos, shared my math videos on YouTube on uh, as a torrent math series one, series two, series three, and series uh, three A, three B, and series four. I was loading them on Mini Nova, I believe, right? And then Mini Nova got taken out, and Kickass Torrents got taken out, and a lot of huge torrent sites got taken out. Pirate Bay is still kicking it, right? Maybe a dumb question, but I, I am wondering about grading comics with a third party. How about Europe? How are my options if I want to grade something here? I, yeah, I missed Kickass Torrents as well. Um, at Nikki, as far as I know, the grading companies, there's three of them, and all three of them are based in the U.S. Uh, I've been trying to find out if there's any place in Canada we could send one. I mean. Canada there should be one but there isn't right we have to go to our local comic book and our local com local comic book store and the way it's set up is if you send it yourself man you're gonna have to deal with customs customs coming back you call it it would be insane right so local comic book store takes comic books from people that want to send comic books in and they send them in as a lot and then they get it back as a lot it takes a few months and it costs you whatever it costs you uh, so maybe find a reputable comic book store in your in europe and ask them to see if uh, they send comics to be graded that might be a way to go uh, i don't know if there's anything in europe and one thing that happens as well uh, there's basically i would send only to two grading companies i wouldn't send them to pgx i would send them to cgc or cg cbgb cbbb <laughs> there's another one i don't know i can't do the acronym right there's two main ones reputable ones and from what i understand they do go to comic book show cbcs thanks mark cbcs right and i would send it personally those two cgc and cbcs are the two i would send it to if you don't if you don't trust a anyone else to handle your comments to send them in for you if you you can't send them in yourself it's too much paperwork these two companies travel with uh to comic shows large comic shows and they do have booths set up where they you can take your comics and they'll grade them there for you i don't think they slab them there for you so they take them back with them and then they slab it but they grade it I've never done it, so I'm assuming they might grade it there, or they just might take your comics and put it in a box and say, this is your comics, and they take it all back to the United States, grade them, and then they ship it back to you. So you would still have to deal with customs coming into to you from wherever, wherever you are. Complicated, I know, I know. Um, I got my fingers crossed. At some point, there'll be uh, branches, satellite branches set up, in Canada and hopefully in Europe somewhere as well right uh, that's my take and I think whichever company does it first they're the winners in this game not the winners but they're gonna see a lot more customers so if they haven't if CGC or CBCS are watching this or they can get the word to them someone in the race of getting comic books graded man you guys should be setting up satellite offices in different countries right and 
just set something up where you can grade the comics in those countries and send them to collectors really we need it yeah okay i'll check with a store if i find one and yes the customs suck i just uh bought a twiddle twiddle cd album from the u.s price of album was 12 dollars. shipping was 15 i had to pay an additional 16 when it got uh, uh to sweden oh that's crazy yeah i've been nailed at the border to buy comics uh coming in from the u.s um and then the, everyone's going through ebay shipping program now and uh, too much for shipping so i'm strictly mainly just buying from canadian buyers uh, and once i start buying again i'm only really going to focus on canadian buyers right now um, and i do surf the american buyers i still do and i send them messages uh, even if they have the ebay shipping program out there i send them a message to say listen can you just send these comic books up without going through ebay shipping program because I've gone through eBay shipping program and comic books have come to me damaged and they double charge and it's too much, right? All this automation is uh, making it harder for collectors to buy comic books, really. Wow. Right? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, looking, I'm looking at the amazing Spider-Man 360 things. I can't believe it. That's crazy. Mark, brother, thank you very much, man thank you very much i appreciate it greatly what a great what a great uh <laughs> i'm super happy insane right it's uh, one thing with comic book collecting is every now and then comic books enter your collection no matter how many you have and it doesn't make a difference on the price really it doesn't make a difference on the price there's comic books that enter your collection that they become some of your favorite comic books in your collection right and it has to do how they came to you how you found them the 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 state of mind you were when you bought them or when you read them right so this just became one of them so it's fantastic fantastic uh should we call the stream gang let's call the stream that was crazy fun that was crazy fun yeah i mainly buy from ebay in europe but this album was uh crazy uh overpriced on ebay and amazon so believe it or not the total cost for getting the album was still the lowest i could find i'm happy it's a lovely album check out tweedle uh for some chill jam band music i've never heard of Twi uh, tweedle and nikki i think you're on discord if you are link up one of their tracks in our music folder that way sometimes personally for me sometimes i go back to the music folder or different folders that we have and i scroll to see some of the stuff because i can't check everything at the same time right check out the stuff uh that's there right uh good night nicholas and by the way nicholas thank you for the offer thank you for the offer i i'm getting closer to that state okay later everyone later sure i'll uh, link something there bro great stream thanks a lot my pleasure mark thank you again thank you everyone for being here thank you for the conversations mods dante spot of tea um da, 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 da. who's the other person who's the other mod nicholas thank you for taking care of business thank you for taking care of business okay uh aside from that if you can make it tomorrow i know a lot of you guys don't like the politics stream but i'm sorry it has to be done right it really has to be done there's a lot of bad things happening and i have to be able to put my head down at night and go to sleep uh politics tomorrow at 2 p.m julian assange on tuesday at 9 a.m i believe and mathematics i believe at 2 p.m on wednesday okay aside from that comic books are back baby <laughs> nice <laughs> i'll see you guys in the next stream everyone i hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic uh saturday okay bye for now